Okay. We're going to start off redox or oxidation reduction with reviewing oxidation states. Oxidation states basically mean charge, but it doesn't just apply to ions. So for example, if I was dealing with something like ClO with a negative one charge, I have to figure out what oxidation state chlorine has and what oxidation state oxygen has. And they can't both behave according to my expectations based on the periodic table. Because if chlorine was a negative one and oxygen was a negative two, that would add up to negative three. And we know they add to negative one. So I need to assume which one is behaving normally and which one is behaving predictably. You'll learn in a minute that we can sort of assume that oxygen is more likely to behave as expected and then other things are less likely. So based on that, the chlorine would be a negative two sorry, the oxygen would be a negative two and the chlorine would be a positive one if I want the total to equal negative one. So here are some rules for how we figure this out. If it's alone, the oxidation state is zero or it's the charge written on it. So for example, if it's Cl2 and there's no charge written on it, the oxidation state's zero. If it's Al and there's no charge written on it, the oxidation state zero. If it's something like Cu plus two, it's alone, but we wrote a charge on it. Well, there you go. If something is bound to other things, we have to kind of have a hierarchy of rules, but as you know by now, most of the things that we have that are rules all have exceptions. Um, so I wrote an order here of what's most likely to behave predictably. Hydrogen at plus one, oxygen at minus two, when bound to other things, um, the halogens at negative one, and then the groups one, group ones and group twos. Um, less predictable things are more towards the center of the periodic table. So the edges are more predictable as you work your way inward, less predictable. These guys are all over the place in terms of what oxidation state they adopt. Let's look at some examples here. Um, we're gonna find the oxidation state of each atom in these compounds. So for HNO3, I know that we're going to total to zero. According to the rules up above, I can assume hydrogen is behaving normally. I can assume oxygen is behaving normally. So what must the nitrogen be in order to combine with these other things to total zero? The positive one and negative six so far, this is going to need to be a positive five in order for everything to work out. The way you would express your answer is like so. Okay, taking a look at our next example, N2O4. I'm gonna assume oxygen is better behaved. Um, again, this is my hierarchy of rules. So if I have four oxygens and they total to negative two, my two nitrogens must be positive eight. Each nitrogen is positive four. When I ask you to express your answer, I want you to tell me each atom, not of each, the total of each element. C is calcium nitride. And this is an ionic compound. And in ionic compounds, things tend to behave, the charges we wrote on the periodic table at the beginning of the year, because those charges were for when things enter into an, ion, into an ionic compound or when they become their most common ions. So calcium is a plus two here. Nitrogen is a minus three, which balances to Ca3N2 as expected and according to the periodic table. So we would write calcium is a plus two, N is a minus three. The next two are easy because they're alone. So I either take the charge that's written on it or it's zero. So O2 is alone here and there's nothing written on it. Here oxygen's alone, but there's something written on it. My last example is a polyatomic ion. And in this case, they don't combine to be neutral. They combine to be negative three. So what must the phosphorus be if when combined with four negative twos, the total's negative three? So what number 
would fit into there, that would make the phosphorus a positive five. Um, when you include your answers, I expect to see a positive or a negative sign on each thing. Um, I don't want you to just write phosphorus equals five. Okay, here's a few for you to try, and then you're gonna come back. You're gonna pause it, try the problems, come back and check your answers. Okay, here are my answers. Go ahead and check yours. And if you have any questions, work with someone near you to figure this out um, because we're gonna need it in the next stage of these problems.